All right, today we're going to talk about the start index absolute block and how it works. A little code example towards the end and even show it in a scope program showing that it does indeed work. All that coming up. To help us understand how this function works, we will be using the graph to show the profile of the speed in relationship to position, and we'll be using the motor and its little tool that's connected to the shaft to show position. All right, let's say we want to move our tool to the five inch position. All we have to do is put the values we need in for acceleration, deceleration, velocity, and distance. As you see, I have put a value of 500 in for distance. This is because my user units are set up so that two zeros represent my decimal place. This, of course, can be different for you. These other settings like acceleration, deceleration, and velocity will let the drive know how you want the profile to look when you're doing your motion. The units for the acceleration and deceleration are user units per millisecond squared. The units for velocity are user units per millisecond. What I mean by this, if your user units are set up in inches, it will be inches per millisecond or inches per millisecond squared. Now that the index is started, you can see that the motor is accelerating up to the commanded velocity. We have just reached commanded velocity. And now you can see that the motor is decelerating to the position of 5 inches. So here is a question for you. What would have happened if you would have called this function while the last index was moving? Or better yet, what if you called it while we were decelerating to position? Would it act any different? Let's try it. Let's say we change the distance to 10 inches with a different velocity at this position. Below, you can see the speed profile of the new index. Because the acceleration and deceleration ramps are so slow, we will never reach the targeted velocity command. As you can see, we are now at 10 inches with our tool. In fact, we could have gone to any position we'd like. It could have even been in the other direction. When we started this move, we were at 4 inches. And we could have told it to go to 3 inches. If you were to have commanded it to go to 3 inches or even 2 inches, the drive would have slowed down based on your XL and D-cell rates and changed direction. You do not need to give it a negative velocity command. Before we do the code example, I want to review the inputs to this block. All the inputs are 32-bit dent values. Acceleration and deceleration have to be values greater than zero. A value of zero will cause the drive to trip. The velocity must be a positive value, but can be zero. The distance command can be negative or positive, to use this block, we call it one time to start the index, or we call it any time we need to change the profile settings. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this program two times, one in ladder logic and one in structure text, just so you can get a feel of how to use these blocks. The program we're going to write is very simple. We're going to have one digital input come on, and it's going to go out to 360 degrees, and another input's going to come on, and we're going to go back to zero. Let's start with ladder logic. This is the ladder logic environment, as you're aware. I'm going to drag in this box, box with enable. I'm going to drag it in two times, one for each command. We can use one block, but for this demonstration, it's easier just to use two. Start index, ABS. We just drag it in on the replacement. 
populate the inputs. Make this one the 360 degrees. Make this one a little bit faster accelerations. Distance back to zero. Okay, on this drive, menu eight is the digital inputs. And I'm choosing to use input number five. So that's parameter five for this drive. And do the same thing for this. All right, let's build the program. Okay, now I would suggest just using positive edged um, contacts. You don't have to, but I find that this is easier. Go online with the new program. Start the program. All right. As you can see, um, you can see my digital inputs turning on and off. My drive is currently disabled. All right, what I have here is a program called CT Scope. It has two scope windows. The top window is the digital inputs, and the bottom window here is the position and speed. All right, so I'm going to change the state of one of my inputs, and you're going to be able to see that this input came on and that it commanded this index to 360 degrees, right? And there's input number six. Let's do that again, but let's do that a little faster. You can see that this, the profile, the speed profile for the two indexes are different. The index back to zero position is much faster than the index to 360 degrees. All right, now let's rewrite this program uh, in structured text. Okay, let's start our structured text version of the program. It's basically going to be the same program we wrote before. First, we're going to start off with our digital inputs, watching the state of it. So I'm going to look at input six to start with. Then I'm going to insert an index using the input assistance. Type in the name of the function I want to use. Make sure that insert with arguments is checked. Click OK. Put your semicolon at the end. Populate the inputs. 360 degrees. Fan of copy-paste. Let's use it and put it to zero degrees. All right, let's build and see how this works. Here's our CT scope, just like before. I'm going to enable the drive and I'm going to change the state of one of the digital inputs and we should see some motion. Well, input 5 told us to go to 0 position. We were already at 0, so that didn't do anything. Okay, so it works just like before, except the profiles have the same profile because I copy-pasted them. If you want to recreate this block for the Unidrive M700, here's the code for it. If you like this video, please subscribe or put a comment below.